Hi everyone, it's Lauren and I'm here with a book haul for you today. I don't feel like I've done a book haul for ages, um, but there is a really good reason for that. As some of you may know, I've recently moved into a smaller flat and we don't have very much storage. Um, a lot of my books are kind of away in the cupboard at the moment, there's not very much space. So I've given myself a bit of an ultimatum that if I'm buying books, I should really be buying them on my Kindle, but I do have some exceptions to that um, that rule, and they are I can buy them if they're not available on Kindle, then that's fine. I can buy them in um, hard copy, and if they're really really pretty or books that you know kind of mean a lot to me, they're kind of special books, then I can buy those as well. Um, so that means all the books that I happen to have bought recently happen to be very very pretty. So I've got them all in a haul for you today. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started. Um, today's Saturday, and um, this video is going to go out tomorrow on Sunday. Tomorrow is actually my birthday, yay! Um, but that means I was out last night, which means I'm quite tired today. So I'm really sorry if I'm just kind of going, oh, these books are pretty and I like them, and I don't have anything more interesting to say. Disclaimer number two, a high percentage of these books have been copied from other people's channels because I've seen them and gone, oh, they're really gorgeous, I need to buy them. And I, and I can't remember like whose channel I would have seen them from, so really sorry. Well, not really sorry, because, you know, this is the point of Bookshare to share books, but I've copied these from a lot of people. So the first set of books I've got to show you today are a collection of feminist short texts which are published by Vintage Classics, and I just think these are really really beautiful all together. Um, you've got The Vindication of the Rights of Women by Mary Wollstonecraft, we have The Second Sex by Simone de Beauvoir, and we have um, The Beauty Myth by Naomi Wolf. So a good range of different writers writing in different eras, um, and I just think they're so beautiful, uh, kind of all together. I'm really getting into my feminist literature at the moment, and I saw these, and I think on someone's Instagram or something, and I just thought they were so um, gorgeous, all in a line, and I the, the kind of text that I might not have picked up if they hadn't have been part of a set, it, so I probably wouldn't have picked them up individually, so I'm really pleased um, to get these read. The next book I got wasn't available on Kindle, which is why I bought it, and that is Bel Canto by Anne Patchett. I've had this on my little TBR list to read for an age. It was the winner of the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2002. I really like books that are nominated or won the Women's Prize for Fiction because I feel like it's such a nice range of different authors and it's a really good way to get introduced to new writing and I've never been let down by books that I've read um, using that as a guide. So this is one that I've been wanting to get to for a while and I've seen a lot of people say very good things about it. I don't really know what it's about though, so that's not very helpful, you know, you things that bleh. I think it's about opera singers but I think really I, I just, I've just heard good things and I've been meaning to read Anne Patchett for a really long time. So yeah just kind of got it. I also wanted to get a couple of Sylvia Plath's works because I read The Bell Jar a long time ago at the age when you discover Sylvia Plath. I think I was probably like 15 and I'd learnt some of her poems at school and I was like oh yeah I'm gonna read The Bell Jar and I, I just think I didn't really know what to expect before I bought it and I didn't really appreciate it and I didn't really like it but I do really like her poetry um, and I think now that I'm kind of older I think I can probably appreciate that a little bit more so I've got this beautiful 50th anniversary edition of The Bell Jar you can see it's all shiny and purple on the front this is published by Harper Perennial Modern Classics apparently um, but the pages are really weird I don't think you can see on the camera but the pages are all like different shapes um, and they're rough on the edge and I don't know if that's because I've got a weird like dud copy or if that's because they're meant to be that way because I mean they are quite it makes it quite easy to 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 flip the pages so interesting but another another beautiful book there and I've also been trying in general to get into reading a few more poetry collections so I wanted to get um, a copy of Ariel and I have seen this on a couple of people's channels and I just thought that's an amazing excuse to buy Ariel because look how gorgeous it is. The illustrations on the front and the back are beautiful, as are the end papers. I think this is a gorgeous, gorgeous little book. And yeah, I'm just looking forward to reading her poetry again because I've read individual poems, but I've never kind of sat down and read a whole um, book. And I do feel that they're quite accessible to people who aren't um, very well versed in poetry. 
<laughs> punny, punny. But also they're not superficial, like I do feel like there's more to be read into them. Um, so that's gonna be, that's gonna be interesting. I'm looking forward to reading those. And then this next one's the last one I promised that I copied from someone else. <laughs> if you uh, live in the UK or in London especially, you might have seen, I think last year or two years ago, the Michael Grandage Company did a whole range of plays um, with some very famous names in them. And one of the plays um, that they put on was Peter and Alice with Judy Dent and Ben Whishaw and I so 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 wanted to come and see this play but typically I mean with these two like the tickets were already gone before I'd even heard about it um, and I saw that Jen Campbell on her channel hauled this hauled the copy of this play and I would say like I never even thought to buy the play like to buy the text itself like how stupid is that I was like oh I'd really like to see that show and then I never got to and it hadn't even crossed my mind to buy a copy of the text Alice Little, who inspired Alice in Wonderland, and Peter Llewellyn Davis, who inspired Peter Pan, met very briefly in 1932. This play is a kind of elaborated, um, imagined expansion of that meeting, um, of what they might have said to each other. And I just think that's so exciting. I loved Peter Pan so much as a child, or I still do, really. And who doesn't like Alice in Wonderland? So I think this would be really interesting to know a little bit more about um, their relationships between their, their families and um, the authors who created their sort of fictionalised personas. So then as a kind of companion um, to that play, I actually bought a, a really pretty copy of Peter Pan. Um, I've, I loved Peter Pan when I was a child, but I think I had like a ladybird abridged version or something. I, I've never actually read Jane Barry's full text and I found this on Book Depository and look how gorgeous this hardback is. You've got like Tinkerbell at the front and all the ships. Um, this is published by Puffin which is a Penguin Young, Young Readers edition. Oh, I just love it. I'm really excited to read like the proper, the proper story and how nice is that going to look on my shelf? That's going to look gorgeous. Um, and I, I also couldn't just stop at one of these. So I also I also bought Matilda by Roald Dahl, but look how nice that is. Oh, they're gonna make such a nice pair. Aww. Matilda was my favorite Roald Dahl book as a child, which, you know, I don't think is surprising considering I have a booktube channel now. I loved the film, I had it on audiobook, and I've just been looking for a nice copy of Matilda for ages. And this still has like the original Quentin Blake illustrations inside, but I just think the cover uh, makes it a bit more of a collectible rather than an actual children's book. And look, like on the front she's doing like the little pose, like they're doing the musical. And I just love it, I love Matilda. She's an amazing role model. She's like the original Hermione Granger. Um, and it's just great, I'm so pl pleased to have this and this one. And the final book I've got to show you today is Almost Famous Women by Megan Mayhew Bergman. This is a collection of short stories and each short story is like a fictionalised um, tale of a historical woman who was, who was almost famous on the edges of um, the history books as it were. And I'm really happy to finally have a copy of this. I've been excited for its release ever since I heard it was coming out this year. But I hadn't been able to find it in shops anywhere, I don't know if I was looking in the wrong place. So I'm really pleased to have this and I think it's going to be a bit of a different read like some short stories semi historical fiction she had really high praise for her first book Birds of a Lesser Paradise so it's it's going to be good to be introduced to this author I think that's it, that's all the hard copy books I bought. I did go mental on my Kindle and bought loads of, loads of e-books. So I'll do a different haul featuring those books. Um, but yeah, let me know if you read any of these and I will see you in my next video and I'll be less tired. I promise, I promise. <laughs> so the first book that I read in March was Everything is Illuminated by Jonathan Safran Foer. This was such an interesting book. It's written in such a different way. It's really hard for me to explain. This is the author puts himself mind this book. Like I was really shocked. I thought, oh I read diversity, this is going to be great, I can introduce people to all these different authors and I just